I lost track of the number of prostitutes I killed during sex. My name is Gary Ridgway, and you may know me as the Green River Killer. Growing up, I was a loner who never quite fit into the world around him. Born in 1949 in Salt Lake City, Utah, I had a troublesome childhood. I witnessed more than one violent argument between my parents. My father was a bus driver who often complained about the presence of sex workers in the neighborhood. As I entered adolescence, my violent tendencies began to surface. I had my first blood at 16, stabbing a six-year-old child who survived my attack. I became obsessed with the power I felt when targeting another person. It was haunting yet exhilarating at the same time. I tried hard to maintain a facade of normalcy. I married thrice, lived religiously and even had a son, but this life just didn't suit me. I had a sexual appetite that was insatiable and I just hated prostitutes. Usually I picked up sex workers along the highway and showed them pictures of my son to gain their trust. We then went into my truck. After a couple minutes of sex from behind I wrapped my forearm around their neck and used my other arm to pull back as tightly as possible. Afterwards I dumped their bodies in secluded areas. They were the perfect little targets as society paid little attention to their disappearances. I took advantage of their vulnerability, feeling a rush of power and control that left me wanting more. I chose remote areas to carry out my heinous acts, hoping to leave no trace behind. This made authorities struggle to piece together my murder puzzle, on top of leading a double life that no one could suspect. With each murder, I grew bolder and more confident in my ability to elude capture. I'd sometimes return to the corpses and do unspeakable acts of necrophilia to satiate my desires. Ted Bundy, who was arrested and working with the police at that time, suggested that I might return to the dump sites for that reason. In 2001, I was finally arrested. During my trial, I pled guilty to 48 murders, making me the second most prolific serial killer in the United States, though the true number is much higher. I hope that by cooperating and providing information about my victims, I could prolong my own life and avoid the death penalty. In the end, I was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole.